Hi, welcome to my chemistry lab slash kitchen. Today we are using a lab from my full year chemistry lab manual, and that is called removal of sugar from bubble gum. There are some chemicals that are called hydrates, and really what it is is an ionic compound that has water molecules stuck to its crystal lattice, and they are only physically associated with that crystal lattice. So we can remove that water by heating them up, in your real life, you have probably come across those little silica gel packets. Those are anhydrous salts, meaning that they've already been dried out and they are looking to absorb water molecules. A lot of the time, those can be found inside of new shoes or new bags, and that's to absorb any moisture that may be found in the shoes or in the bag. So when I first was a chemistry teacher, I did not have a chemistry lab the same way I don't have a chemistry lab here. So instead of using a real anhydrous salt or a real hydrate, we instead are going to model this using bubble gum. So for real, what you would do is take a, a hydrate and you would put it inside this crucible and you would heat this over a Bunsen burner with the lid, maybe a little bit askew so that the water can come out of here. Um, you would probably use one a little bit bigger than this tiny little baby one. Um, but before that, you'd have to take its mass and figure out um, what percent of the mass is water and can be removed. So you would heat it up, heat it up, heat it up. Some hydrates have color change to let you know when they're dried out, but sometimes they don't. So you would take this little crucible, let it cool down for a minute, and then you would plop it on top of the balance and figure out how much mass you have lost because it's water evaporating out into the air that you're not capturing and measuring. So that's the idea with a real hydrate. Well, in the bubble gum lab, <laughs> this gum wrapper is going to count as that crucible, the little porcelain tool. And this piece of bubble gum is going to be the hydrate and the sugar is going to represent the water. I'm gonna chew this bubble gum and um, I'm gonna try to not show you the chewed bubble gum because that's really gross, but <laughs> um, we will pretend that this is a hydrate and the sugar is water. So I'm gonna collect some data first, I'll chew the bubble gum, and then I'll get back to you. All right, here we are. <laughs> I gotta squat down for this. Um, so we have my balance, and I'm going to take the measurement of the whole situation here. Um, let me just make sure that this was down to zero. My balance, for whatever reason, likes to go to 0.3, or 0 0.03. Okay, so we're at zero, and the whole thing is 6.40. I'm going to record that and then just the wrapper is 0.25. So I can do math to figure out what this mass is. I don't really want to put it on the balance because I'm about to chew it. Although this balance is my kitchen balance. It's a food safe balance. So I'm going to chew this and then we will figure out how much I have lost due to chewing. It's very clear that I have lost my talent of blowing bubbles, although I will say it hasn't been that much time. Well, it's actually not reading. It's 1231. I think it's been five minutes. Um, so I have kept my gum wrapper. And the idea here is that this is the crucible. When I measure the real hydrate, I'm going to have a crucible. So I have to keep my fake crucible here. And what I'm going to do is put the chewed gum inside of this and remeasure it. Now, there's a few things. Number one, I definitely have not dissolved all of the sugar. There's still some sweetness to this, but I am a grown up and this is giving me a sugar headache. <laughs> so I am done chewing this gum. Um, I think I got most of it to be totally fair. And then secondly, I have added mass to this gum by adding my saliva to it. Now, when I take it out of my mouth, I'm going to make sure that it's not full of saliva. I'm going to do my best to make sure that it's as dry as possible. But there's only so much I can do to control that. Um, so we're going to get moving. 
Okay, we're just gonna trust that my chewed bubblegum is in here. I don't wanna show it to you, it's really gross. And I feel like it's kind of personal and you know, we're cool, but I don't know, you like that. Um, so I'm turning on the balance and I've just dropped my gum on this balance. Let me show you. All right, this is my chewed gum on the balance and the mass is coming out to 2.74 grams. And that's chewed gum. So that is going to account uh, for subtracted sugar, but also added saliva. But in total, I was net negative. So this is going to show us that I have chewed most of the sugar out of this gum. Now, if you look at the nutritional facts for the sugar, um, the piece of gum should have been on a double bubble. The whole piece should have been five grams and it should be four grams of sugar, meaning that it's just one gram of sticky gum <laughs> and the rest of it is sugar that you're supposed to dissolve. Um, this piece was obviously kind of large. I know that these pieces are 80% sugar, <laughs> um, but we can do the math to figure out how close I was to the correct data. If this were a hydrate, what I would do at this point is to pick it up and throw it back on my Bunsen burner to make sure um, that all of the water's coming out. And the only way to really do that is to check on the mass multiple times. So the hydrate is in the crucible. The Bunsen burner is drying it out and then you put it on the balance, you get a reading, you put it back on the Bunsen burner. If you put it back on the balance a few minutes later and the mass has dropped, it means that you're still evaporating water. But if the mass is mostly unchanged or totally unchanged, it means that all of the water that could be evaporated has been evaporated. So that's kind of the idea with taking multiple readings of the mass for this. Um, I have never asked my students to spit out a piece of gum and then <laughs> re-chew it. That's pretty disgusting. But, I mean, you could do it if you really wanted to. Okay, we're going to take this data back to the office and check on the percent error and how well we did. Okay, here we are with all the data. Um, so what I have determined from the nutritional information on the bubblegum package is that this bubblegum is 80% sugar, which is quite disgusting. I want to figure out how far or close we are to this 80%. And of course, there's a huge amount of error in here because I added a bunch of my saliva to the bubble gum. Um, so the first thing we need to do is subtract these two values to figure out the mass of just the bubble gum. So if I do that, then the bubble gum is going to be equal to 6.15 grams. And that is the dry, unchewed, brand new bubble gum. And that is my value for the total. Then what I need to do is also subtract the bubblegum wrapper from my final. Because remember, my gum wrapper was holding that together. Um, so that would have given me 2.49 grams of chewed bubblegum. And if I subtract these two values, the 615 and the 249... Of course, my brain is trying to speak. <laughs> um, so this is the new, this is the chewed. And then at the end, the mass lost will represent the sugar that I dissolved. So 615 and 249 gave me 300, I'm sorry, 300, 3.66 grams of sugar. And if I want to figure out um, how much sugar was in my piece as a percent by mass calculation, I would do the 3.66 divided by the 6.15, which really represents the sugar over the total. And if I do this, I'm going to get um, 0.595, which is really... 59 and a half percent. So my piece of bubble gum was 59 and a half percent sugar, but the package indicated that it should have been 80. So from here, I want to do the percent error equation to kind of show me how far off my answers are. So when I do percent error, it is um, 
the absolute value of the experimental minus the accepted. So I can, because the accepted is larger, I can put that one in the front. So 80 minus 59.5, and I'm going to divide that by the accepted value. Accepted value here is 80. That is the nutritional information that comes from the package. That gives me 20.5 over 80. We're coming in about 25%. Okay, and then my percent error is equal to just what I said, 25.6% error. I should maybe label this blue that it's sugar so we can kind of keep everything straight here. Um, so clearly my percent error of 25% error indicates that I have very little precision here. This lab is not really data that you can trust. It goes to show that I, two things, didn't chew the gum long enough. I had mentioned in the video I was getting a sugar headache and I quit a little bit early. So I didn't get all of the sugar out from that. And also I added saliva. So the sugar that I was removing was being replaced by my saliva, which could, of course, increase the mass. To what extent? I don't really know. Um, there's, as far as I know, not an easy high school chemistry way to figure out by what percentage this is happening. Um, but it is clear that my data is really not, not great and not reliable. But the point here is not to get great data. The point is to go through the motions, figure out how to solve the math problems, and then to get a little bit of practice, see how it works. Uh, and I think that this lab accomplished that very well. So if there are any remaining questions, please leave them in the comment section below the video. Subscribe so you don't miss the next lesson, and I will see you there. Bye.